Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. I can't help it. I'm a product of advertising. I see something advertised, I have to go buy it. Buy this. But that doesn't mean there aren't some advertising gimmicks or characters that work better than others. Buy this one too. Take, for example, cereal labels. There are dozens of cereals out there, but only a distinct few seem to survive over the years. Is it really the taste of the cereal that keeps kids coming back, or is it the mascots? The timeless characters that go through many changes, but still keep the same likability over the decades. No, it's obviously the taste. But the mascots play a big role, and that's why I'm counting down the top 11 best sugar-coated marketing icons of all time. Why top 11? Because I like to go one step beyond. So, sit back and enjoy the top 11 greatest cereal mascots. Milk and cereal. Cereal, cereal. Milk and cereal. Cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. I get it for myself. I keep it for myself. I get it for myself. Rice Krispies. Number 11. Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops. Released in around 1945, Toucan Sam started off with a relatively boring scenario, just talking in pig Latin. Crispy and delicious day for breakfast or for acting snake. Riveting. Smart kid. By the way, if that voice sounds different to you, that's because it wasn't always done by the same person. In fact, that's actually Mel Blanc, the voice of most of the Looney Tunes characters. But they didn't feel like the character was strong enough, so they switched out the voices with Paul Freese, another actor who might sound familiar. So look for Kellogg's Fruit Loops. Follow your nose. <laughs> did you hear that note? Yes, it's the same guy who did Ludwig von Drake. That's kind of cool. They also changed the scenario around, too. It usually starts off with somebody having a problem or searching for something. No matter what the dilemma, Fruit Loops always seems to have the answer. They left without breakfast again. I've been adrift for days and I'm tired of frozen breakfast. I need a really rad breakfast to help get me back home. Follow my nose! Just follow my nose! Follow my nose! Ah, uh, Kellogg's Fruit Loops cereal. Just how many problems can Fruit Loops change anyway? Oh jeez, Toucan Sam, my father has AIDS! Then follow your nose. Well, okay! It always knows. Oh, I wonder what it could be. Ah, uh, Kellogg's Fruit Loops cereal. <gasps> My father still has AIDS. Well, whatever the issue, there was always a big bowl of Fruit Loops cereal there to make you forget about all your problems. Or at least, try to make you forget. I got a full breakfast! Another Fruit Loops fan! And I got great taste like me to get them! My father still has AIDS. Number 10. Cookie Crook and Officer Crow. Now technically these characters aren't around anymore, but I wanted to list them just to show the evolution of a character. Originally released in 1977, the mascot for Cookie Crisp was originally a wizard named Jarvis. Isn't that a weird name? His gimmick was to turn cereal bowls into big pots of cookies. You know, because our cereals were already so boring. It didn't catch on very well, so they changed it in 1985 to a disruptive pair called Cookie Crook and Officer Crumb. This caught on much better, but it still wasn't gimmicky enough. If only there was an annoying catchphrase that every kid could be shouting obnoxiously! Cookie Crisp! So they gave the Cookie Crook a dog named Chip, who would ruin everything by always shouting, Cookie Crisp! That did even better, so after a while they just said, Fuck the cops and robbers, let's just make it about the dog. So the dog was a mascot for a while. Ah, oh, with a mouthful of chips and every bite. But they didn't think the design was hip enough for the young kids. So they decided to redesign it and make it into a wolf or a husky, I'm not sure what it is. And made the change complete by giving him a sports jacket. What? You can't see the natural evolution of going from a Merlin-style wizard into a sports-centered husky? <laughs> Someone needs to take some logic classes. For all the changes it went through, the Cookie Crook and Cop were the best additions. Because hey, who doesn't love a good game of Cops and Robbers? Well, okay, Cops and Robbers, but still, it was a good idea. Lasting almost eight years in commercials. That's one tough cookie that's hard to beat. Cookie Crisp! Cookie Crisp! The whole and good part of this complete breakfast. Milk and cereal. Cereal and milk. Number nine. Cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. The Honey Nut Cheerios Bee. Though not having much of a character, this bee was certainly enjoyable to watch, making any real-life bees look like fucking monsters. His gimmick was to try and get people to try his cereal, but they never seem interested. Until he says the magic words. Time you were tempted with the taste of nuts and honey. Nuts and honey. Nuts and honey? Did you say honey and nuts? 
Did you say hookers and blow? Oh no, you said honey and nuts. That, 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 that's not nearly as good. Actually, I always like watching this commercial in particular around Christmas time. That and the Fruity Pebbles commercial with Santa. And no, they're not gonna make it on the countdown because they're already on a show. It's like putting Jack Sparrow on the list because of the Pirates of the Caribbean cereal. It just doesn't seem right. That and they promote smoking. Dude, that's just wrong. It's funny that we all just call him B because he actually was given a name. In 2000, they held a contest for who would name the Honey Nut Cheerios Bee, and a 5th grader won the prize by naming him, are you ready for this, Buzz Bee. Really? That's the most imaginative name you could pick from the list? Well, while you're at it, why don't you just call these characters Squeak Mouse, Fly Bird, or Shit Spewer? The possibilities are just endless! Well, to me, he's the Honey Nut Cheerios Bee. Sure, it's a long name, but a mascot by any other name would still be as marketable. Or should I say... Be marketable. <laughs> no, that'd be silly. I'd be stretching out the middle of a word for no reason. Number eight. Wendell from Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Getting its start in 1987, Cinnamon Toast Crunch didn't just have Wendell, but actually two other chefs. What were their names? Nobody knows. In fact, Wendell is the only one who ever had a name and identity out of these three. Isn't that a little strange? They were a trio for a while, until this one commercial had Wendell suck himself into a television because he was distracted by the Cinnamon Toast Crunch that was on the TV. Wendell's girl Cinnamon's a crunchy crazy! Which is odd, because he makes the stuff and he's surrounded by it. Isn't that kind of like watching porn when you own a bordello? The other chefs got him back, but the gimmick was now changed. Now the scenario was, Wendell would go crazy every time he saw Cinnamon Toast Crunch and would immediately go after it. And where did the other two chefs go? Nobody knows! My guess is Wendell had them assassinated. Somewhere at the bottom of the ocean, you'll find two chefs with cement shoes and a cookie crook next to a cookie cop. They had to go somewhere! Since then, the focus seemed to veer away from Wendell and instead showed off other people who could see everything except why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch. But does he know why kids love Cinnamon Toast Crunch? Is it animal, vegetable, or mineral? I just don't know. Well, isn't it obvious? It's covered in crack. The sugar's just a cover. That's pure 100% blood. <laughs> Haven't you ever wondered why your kids get so active after they eat it? Whatever does go into those crystals, you can always be sure that there's a creepy old man who's there to make it. A toasty part of a complete breakfast. Milk and cereal. cereal and milk. Number seven. Cereal and milk. Cereal and milk. Lucky, from Lucky Charms. Not too much has changed with him over the years. Literally, from day one, the gimmick has always been the same. Catch Lucky, and you get his Lucky Charms. Glory be! Free Shamrocks! Catch a pack of Lucky Charms! Okay, what the hell's a kid doing with handcuffs? Getting it started in 1962, Lucky was originally known as LC Leprechaun. Well, what did the LC stand for? Oh, Lucky Charms. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fucking idiot. Orange, green, and blue. Marshmallows at every spoonful. A magical taste for you. Nothing too much to say about him, just that kids love chasing after things, so the idea of trying to catch something to get reward is always foolproof. The chase never stops. But would you be pissed off if he caught a leprechaun and instead of gold he got a friggin' bowl of cereal? Woohoo! And now that you caught me, you get me lucky charms! Uh, no, I want the gold. Hey, no! You want a lucky charms! No, I want the gold. Hey, no! You want a lucky charms! I'm quite positive I want the gold. Well, if you want to deny the sweet taste of- There, now you're dead. How do you like that? An idea so basic it has to be admired, Lucky is the perfect prize to catch, or smash, at the end of any rainbow. So much to keep delicious. Number 6. Captain Crunch from, well, Captain Crunch. Is it me, or is this guy the snagglepuss of cereal mascots? Captain Crunch with Crunch Berries. Uh, next time, let's not wish quite so hard. And remember to exit, stage right. Actually, Captain Crunch was another character that started out with an entire cast. There was a dog, four annoying kids, and an evil pirate named LaFoot. But that villain was replaced by the Soggies, these big puddles of splooge with eyes that like to make everything, you guessed it, soggy. Captain Crunch cereal! They also had some sort of evil machine that led the Soggies, but I can't really remember his name. 
This scenario would have been fine and good, except that they actually turned it into a straight-up war. I mean, it was like a soap opera with guns, spaceships, giant robots, kind of get out of control. Now, let's move on to waterboarding them. I'm not sure if the Soggies are still around, but the Captain sure is. In fact, they even revealed his entire name at one point, calling him Captain Horatio Magellan Crunch. Because every kid would remember that name. Couldn't you call him Joe? Always crunchy, never soggy, Captain Crunch still remains the captain that can make it happen. Let's go see, dog. I hate to see a grown pirate cry. Number five. Count Chocula from Count Chocula. Speaking from a health point of view, what's worse than marshmallows in your cereal? How about chocolate marshmallows in chocolate cereal? Why don't you just throw in miniature cheeseburgers while you're at it? Well, as horrible as it is for you, it tasted great, and it had a great mascot. In fact, it was so good that there were actually cereal spin-offs. And it's ironic, because the more healthy they got, the less successful they did. Like, Frankenberry's still sort of around, Blueberry you barely see. And who the hell even remembers Fruity Yummy Mummy? What, was Vegetable Lactor too good a name to take? Well, we still love the characters. And it was kind of clever that they always took the voice of the movie monster they were spoofing. Like Count Chocula as Bela Lugosi. And you'll enjoy my Count Chocula cereal! Frankenberry as Boris Karloff. Frankenberry has strawberry flavored sweeties. And for some reason, Blueberry was Peter Lorre. With my hauntingly delicious cereal. Did he ever play a ghost? Oh well, he's dead now, so maybe that counts. But either way, it was Count Chocula that brought in the big bucks. Not the healthiest cereal, but hey, that's why we loved it so much. How about that monster for breakfast today? Number 4. Sunny from Coco Puffs. Sunny is just an addict, okay? He needs help. He needs to go into rehab and have his illness treated. Go for Coco Puffs! Go for Coco Puffs! Look at him. He's just trying to do his everyday work when suddenly these little bungholes come up and tempt him by feeding his habit. What's up with those kids? They're fucking enablers! What's a Puff Puff Coco Puffs? Hey, hey, you want some stuff? You want some stuff? I got some good stuff right here. Yeah, yeah, that's Coco Meth right there, man. Yeah, Crystal Puffs. Get your nice and saucy fucked up. But don't blame the kids, blame his grandpa, who started out pushing the stuff back in the 60s. I'll speed things up, cause Sonny can't resist Cocoa Puffs. He would do this in every commercial. What a dick! After Gramps disappeared, I'm assuming died from some sort of overdose, Sonny was left on his own to fight his inner demons every day for the rest of his life. Poor soul. We may never know what he's like as a sober bird. By the way, do you know who originally did the voice for Sonny? You would never guess in a million years. Get grabs for me! Free and Coco Pops! That's right, it's the guy who did Lion O from Thundercats! What the hell happens to a guy who goes from a butch manly superhero to a crazy addicted bird? I'll tell you what happens. Puffs happens! Everyone thinks Lindsay Lohan got addicted to drugs? Not a chance. It was Puffs! Tennessee Williams addicted to alcohol? Not even close. It was Puffs! 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 Remember kids, life may be rough, but don't do the Puffs. It isn't glamorous or cool, but kid stuff. Number three. Sugar Bear from Golden Crisp. I love this guy. This is the most laid-back character who always somehow manages to kick ass. Put the pole in the bowl. He's like if the dude was on steroids. He's freaking awesome. I can't get enough Super Golden Crisp. It's got the crunch with punch. He surprisingly started out on a show called Linus the Lion Hearted, who actually hosted a slew of characters that had their own cereals. Alpha Bites, Rice Crinkle of Dusting, Bolt Sugar Crisp. Did you see him? Did you see him? Watch it again. Sugar Crisp. How funny is that? All these overblown characters, and the one that makes it big is the very last one. 
I don't know if he did well because of the cereal or if the cereal did well because of him, but he stuck around. And like most cereals, Golden Crisp, then called Sugar Crisp, seemed to be the one entity that could solve all the world's problems. Hey Blob, you're polluting the air. I don't care, bear. Well, I do. So I'll put out the fire and clear up the air. Take that, Al Gore! Mm. You deserve a reward, Sugar. Super Sugar Crisp is my reward. Yeah, he's just like, fuck off, bitch, I got some cereal that needs eating. Eventually, the story became that all these evil baddies would try to steal his golden crisp. What's up, fellas? Your time to the bad was too to for a crime. But as soon as he popped a few in his mouth, he became like Popeye and kicked ass. Yes, that snake's bite is history. Yeah, I can't get enough of me, golden crisp. Everybody's falling for that great honey crunch. There's an even stranger plot that evolved where he constantly tries to steal Golden Crisp from an old lady. Isn't that a little... um... low? Here comes that singing bear again to steal my post Sugar Crisp cereal. I'll take that. Well, if there's anyone that can make robbing from the elderly cool, it's Sugar Bear. Always smooth, always laid back, and always packed. I can't get enough soup Golden Crisp, it's got the crunch with touch. <laughs> Number two. The Tricks Rabbit from Tricks. This character is like a Greek tragedy. Along with Oedipus and Antigone, the Tricks Rabbit will always be remembered as a great tragic figure. All he wants is Tricks, just a simple little cereal that he decided to devote his entire life to. But will the kids ever give him the damn stuff? No! And why? Tricks are for kids. Because they're fucking assholes, that's why. It's like the natural order of things. The world goes around, the sun always comes up, and the Tricks Rabbit must suffer. How horribly cruel! Silly rabbit, you tricks are still for kids! No, tell me. What did he ever do to any other human being? Just cut him a break! Joy to the world! I'm gonna get to eat tricks! Look, even Santa steals from him! What a jolly old prick! <laughs> Even with the help of Bugs Bunny, he could never seem to get any. Have I got a disguise for you? <laughs> Make that bunny! Silly <laughs> <Billy> rabbit! <laughs> I prefer a happy ending. God, that's pretty bad when even Bugs can't stand to watch your misery. <laughs> There's even this one commercial I love where you think he's finally gonna get it. After all these years of specific kids, well... <laughs> <laughs> Bastards! So I guess the Tricks Rabbit is a way of showing kids humanity's unnatural cruelty to others. It's not right, it's not fair, but you gotta just deal with it! Tricks are for kids, motherfucker! Ah the Tricks Rabbit. Because hey, we're just flat out sadists. You fell for that one. Cereal. And the number one greatest cereal, cereal mascot cereal is... Tony the Tiger from Frosted Flakes. This is the cereal icon we all wanted to be. The sports star. The guy that said, if you just eat my sugar-coated crusty paper, you'll be unstoppable like me. Good, there, great. How can you not like this guy? He's strong, he's athletic, and has a clean personality, unlike some of the other addicts on this countdown. Every ad seemed the same. You got some kid who was being made fun of before the big game. Hey kid, you had shot yesterday! Come on, see if you're any good! You two up for a little game? You wanna take a horsey ride? <laughs> hey, Wimp! I heard that you cried when your mother got slaughtered by your drunken father! <gasps> But then Tony's Frosted Flake seems to give the kid the extra energy that he or she needs. Let's go! Bring out the tiger! No one Uh, who let the tiger out of the ice? And you! Frosted Flakes, the middle finger of breakfast. Actually, Tony started out in 1958 and even had a son named Tony Jr. Sugar Frosted Flakes by Kellogg's out of Battle Creek. His voice was different, too. It was done by Dallas McKennon, who you may recognize from that Haunted Mansion ride. There go! Then the voice was continued by Thurl Ravenscroft, who sang a lot of the songs from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. You show him, but first let's start with a complete breakfast, including my Frosted Flakes. But after his death in 2005, they gave the job to Lee Marshall, who's still doing it today. Go, Tiger! He was the only serial mascot who actually kind of seemed like a role model. He was cool, strong, and just a character you could look up to. Oh, 
yours, tiger. Don't need the tiger. If you didn't like him, then you're a great big douchebag. And you. And those are the top 11 greatest cereal mascot. I hope you enjoyed them. And before I go, I'd like to acknowledge all the poor souls who sadly lost their lives to the addiction that is Cocoa Puffs. Nostalgia Trick, I remember it so you don't have to.